Okay, if your function is defined implicitly, meaning that the x, y's, and z's are all intermingled in, um, where you have f of, capital F here, of x, y, z equal to a constant, then what you can do is you can find the surface area by finding the region in the x, y plane or in just uh, in whatever plane you uh, project down onto, whatever coordinate plane you project down onto, find the region in that plane that your, um, that your surface is, uh, that is under your surface and you need a normal vector to that region in this case uh, they generically call it P if it's going to be the XY plane then you use P equals K that would be normal to the XY plane but if you use the other ones you would use I or J so normal to R so you get this function F you take the gradient of it and you take its magnitude so the numerator is the magnitude of the gradient denominator you do a dot product between the gradient and your vector p and underneath that uh, so that's going to be um, these these bars here are absolute value bars because what's inside is a number what's inside of here is a vector so these bars are <clears throat> are magnitude bars and you can find the surface area by doing the double integral over the region r it doesn't have to be rectangular um, of that fraction okay so let's see an example We have uh, find the area cut from the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 2 by the plane z equals 1. So we have this plane z equals 1 and we cut from it. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. There we go. So we uh, cut from the plane the top part. And we want to find the area, surface area of the top part, the sphere. We um, we find what the f is. The function f of x, y, z is the is the sphere. Uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals two. The formula from the previous slide. We take the gradient of f and find its magnitude. So the gradient f is the vector made up of the partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z, respectively, in the i, j, and k components. So 2x, 2y, and 2z. Now the magnitude of that would be 4x squared and 4y squared and 4z squared. Now to simplify that, we can see that the 4 is involved in all of them. We can factor out the 4, but then we notice the x squared plus y squared plus z squared underneath. And in this function f, that's set equal to 2. So I can replace that with the 2. So we're talking about the square root of 8, or uh, 2 square root of 2. Great, that's a numerator. That is the gradient of f's magnitude. Wonderful. Um, now we need to see what's going on with the region, the region r, so we can figure out what p is. Um, look at the intersection between the plane and the sphere. When z is equal to 1, we'll have x squared plus y squared equals to 1. It's the unit circle in the xy plane. And so it's our unit circle in the xy plane is going to be the region over which we integrate. So what's going to be the p, what's going to be normal to that region? It's going to be the vector k. Okay, now focus on the denominator of the, focus on the denominator of the uh, integrand here. We take the gradient of f and we dot it with p. So we'll get 0 for the i component, 0 for the j component, I mean um, 0 for that i component dot part of the dot, 0 for the j component part of the dot when we multiply. And then we have the k component, which is just 2z, multiplied by 1. So the, the, um, the absolute value of that dot product is the absolute value of 2z. Now z is always positive where we're at, so we can just basically drop the absolute value bars at that point and have 2z as our denominator. We have our numerator, 2 root 2, our denominator, 2z. All right, now let's take a look at the integral. So we divide 2 root 2 by 2z, cancel the 2s. We could factor out the, uh, the root 2 from the integral. And what we have is 
uh, 1 over z um, dA. It would be nice if this was a constant because then we have just the area, you know, double integral dA is just the area of the region, but we have 1 over z, and we know the z can't stay like this. Um, you, you know, this is a polar, this is a circular region. We're going to do it in polar. We're going to do r d r d theta. So what is z? Go back to the equation for the sphere, and what we get is that that z is the square root of 2 minus x squared minus y squared. Oh, that should be a parenthesis. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to go on the next slide, and we'll uh, we'll calculate this integral by switching into polar. So we have this integral here, and we have this region. So we're going to switch into polar. But this guy is r squared. Remember, dA is r dr d theta, and then we'll go from r goes from zero out to one. And theta is going to be all from 0 to 2 pi. Conveniently, we have this r, our friend the r from r d r d theta, to help us do a u sub because what's underneath here is quadratic in r. So 2 minus r squared is going to be what we let u equal. And we take the derivative, du is negative 2 r dr. So r dr is what we have to replace. So we let negative half of du be r dr. And we'll, what we'll be looking at is negative half of u to the negative one half du that we have to integrate. That becomes u, you know, add one to the exponent. We get u to the half over a half. But don't forget about this guy out here. These two guys cancel, but they cancel with the negative one. So we get negative root u. All right, what do we do with this negative root u? This is now going to be plugged back in for r. We'll have negative the square root of 2 minus r squared evaluated from 0 to 1. Um, there's no thetas involved, so what we can do is you know, separation here, and we'll have the integral from 0 to 2 pi on d theta times this uh, fundamental thermal calculus evaluation. When we put a 1 in, we're going to get uh, root 1, so negative 1. When we put a 0 in, we're going to get root 2, but minus a negative will be a plus. Uh, this guy right here is just our 2 pi. The root 2 is still out there, so this would be our answer. Uh, let's simplify. Let's uh, switch these two around. Root 2 minus 1. And then let's distribute this uh, root 2 in. So we get 2 pi. Stay on the outside. We'll get a 2 from distributing here and a minus root 2 from here. So this will be our answer for the surface area of the cap.